welcome to another episode of Tiny Nest. I'm Kiva. And I'm Jake. This series is following our tiny house project from the early stages through to completion and beyond. This episode is part one of how we installed our exterior siding. So we're just about to start putting up some siding and just wanted to show how we've sort of cut out of the um, panels of the siding to fit around the box or trim. And every time we made a cut into the, the siding we had to restain any sort of uh, exposed wood that was because of the cut. And any piece of angled trim that the siding goes up against, we've just taken the skill saw and matched the angle of the, of the trim so that it will fit nicely. In order to get a piece that's going to go around the box, we have to take into account that the pieces on the sides of the box need to line up perfectly with this piece that's going to span the whole length. So what we've done is cut all the pieces ahead of time. We're going to just loosely fit them in and fit this adjoining piece on, shuffle it around until everything's perfect, and then uh, screw in the bottom piece as a holder. So you'll see how it works, but first we're just going to get it in place and make sure that we're in the right spot. Okay, so this is my side's just held in with friction and Kiva's keeping that side from falling apart. And this is gonna be the bottom piece that's gonna go underneath. And so the reason that we're sort of test fitting this is that this bottom little piece, we're actually just gonna face screw right through it into the, into the house. So that means that unlike every other piece where we have to nail through the tongue, um, we could do this after it's in place. Okay, so we've already got the other side in place and I'll show you what we're doing. Basically taking this bottom piece and adding it to where it's gonna be. And then I'm just gonna hold it in place, pre-drill. Because again, I want uh, the screw to pull on the piece, not bite into it. I want it to bite into the house and, and pull the piece into the house. <clears throat> and this is a stainless steel screw, so it's going to be weather resistant. Okay, now that we've got the bottom pieces screwed in, this is all sort of in the, the position that we want it to be, and we're confident that if we were to take these off, and then reinstall them that they're going to end up just like this. So that's exactly what we're going to do. And uh, from here, this piece we've checked is level or at least matches closely enough everything else that we're going to be able to carry on and be confident that it's going to line up further down, down the way. So we'll just go ahead and carry on from here. This is the first piece that we need to fit underneath a window that's going to span on both sides of it. And we realized that um, it was going to be impossible to put the groove down on top of the previous tongue and then lever it in because of the way we sloped all of our trim. So we've just sliced off the half, like the back half of the groove, the same way we did on the box piece on the top. And we're just going to get it up into position tight underneath. And then the groove will fit just like so. So it gives a good finish. The only thing is that this, the bottom half of it uh, is not going to be secured. We're, we're still going to nail through the, the tongue on the top, but the bottom could potentially be flapping. So we're just going to put a few face nails in and uh, just fill. They're just going to be tiny little points that we're going to need to fill with wood filler 
and then we'll just touch up with stain after and hopefully it won't be noticeable. And we realize that we'll probably have to do something like this every time we need to get underneath just the way that, um, again, the trim is. And we didn't really plan a solution for this ahead of time because we've never done this before. But this solution that we're just describing, I think is gonna be okay. So we're gonna go ahead with that. Because of the way we've done the trim on the windows, we've had to do another bit of fancy cutting, including cutting off one side of the groove. So we just have to place it in like this. We're going to make some fancy pieces like this to completely encompass the overhanging piece of top trim. When we laid out our story pole where we wanted the seams to land, we prioritized keeping them away from the bottoms of trims wherever we could to avoid having a thin strip of groove to try to get underneath there. Um, and that's still good to not have an issue with that, but the issue that we've created is that um, we, to deal with this, we have to make these crazy pieces, whereas it would have been better to have the seam land somewhere within this so that the piece below would have its own notch and then the piece above would have its own notch. We wouldn't have this thing that has to actually go around the top piece of trim. So it looks like this, and uh, I'll show you how we made it. So to make this piece that's going to encompass the top of the trim, basically I made a, a piece that would span the length of this back wall held it up in place and you can actually see where I made my marks. So I made a mark for where the edge of the top trim is and where the edge of the side pieces of trim are. Then I would take a uh, piece of scrap, put it on where I want the piece to end up, butt it up against and then made marks, uh, well, held it right up to where it's going to be in its final position and made marks on this piece on both sides of the, uh, the top and the bottom of the trim. Then I would take that, hold it up against the piece and transfer the marks so that I had the, the height and the uh, top edge all marked on the piece. Then combining those marks with the width marks, I could make basically a trace of what I wanted to cut out and then all I had to do was use a skill saw at the uh, 15 degree angle I just plunged it down ran it along made these cuts and then used a uh, sawzall to trim out what was remaining and then also we had to cut off one half of the groove so that that angle the slope of these cuts can fit up underneath and get it into place like that and then we're going to need to face nail in uh, along the bottom to get the bottom up tight and then we can go ahead on the top as normal. We found that a good way to start each wall is to figure out where the first seam needs to be, then take two scrap pieces and screw them in at that height and then we can fit all the pieces and work up from there. And because the bottom piece is going to be screwed in uh, the same way that these temporary pieces are going in. We can just unscrew these, pull them out, get that last piece, that strip cut to the right uh, thickness, fit it into the groove, and then screw it in as the final uh, finishing touch. To get the first piece fit underneath the furnace opening, we just need to shave a tiny bit off of the tongue. It was really close. Uh, I've just got the groove on the tongue and a little scrap on the end there, and then just to get it tight, I'm just gonna wedge it underneath and lift this, just kind of flex it into place. There we go. Uh, and then I can put that on and we can work our way up from there. Pieces like this are pretty easy. They just need to fill a horizontal span. And we found out pretty quick that rather than trying to measure this width really precisely and then mark a piece, we would just mark a piece slightly bigger than the space, bring it over, hold it up and make a mark of how much more we had to trim off. And using that way, we've been going a lot faster. Whenever we were test fitting pieces, if we got to about three or four, they would tend to fall out. 
So we just tack a little nail in to hold it in place while we continue testing. We're using two and a quarter inch galvanized casing nails to nail the planks onto the house. And they're thick enough that there is a risk of uh, snapping the tongue off. So I've got a drill bit very close to the size of the nail and I'm drilling, pre-drilling all the holes for the nails. And the head that's tapered up to be larger than the shaft uh, is what's actually gonna hold the planks onto the house. The rain screen strips are supposed to be centered over the studs, uh, so I've just pre-drilled dead center of the strip. Even if it's off by a little bit, there's still three quarters of an inch on each side that it'll still bite into something. Um, so I'll just get the nail in, and then a lot of these uh, planks have a curve this way. It's either called scooped or cupped, I can't remember. But uh, it results in the top of it, when the bottom's sitting on the previous tongue, the top of it is usually sitting away from the wall. So when I before I nail, so that I get the nail in where I want it for when it, it is tightened all the way, I wanna hold the piece into its final position first and uh, make sure that everything is where I want it and then just tap it in. And I'm just getting them down most of the way and then I'll finish it off with a, uh, a nail sinker. I'm always checking the gap and occasionally checking it with the level to make sure that things are getting way out of whack. Sometimes the pieces are flexed in different ways. So like this, I'll wanna pull it down as I nail. If I just blindly nail, <laughs> blindly nail in and then check after, I might have something that's gonna screw up a, a subsequent piece. Okay, I got my nail set. I think I called it a nail sinker a second ago. Um, and I'm just gonna tap this in until the head is completely recessed uh, into the wood. On the other side, you saw how the nail's going in at an angle, so it's actually coming out below the tongue on the other side, so the groove won't interfere there. And then with this sunk in, uh, it won't interfere on the front either. <laughs> so that's good and depending on how much the piece is curved, tapping it in when the head starts biting into the hole which is narrower than it, it'll start pulling the piece and will suck it right up against the rain screen into its final position. If you want to see some of our previous videos, click on the preview tiles, and subscribe if you want to follow our progress. You can also visit our website here.